I'd like to thank Devo Music and Devo Movies for allowing me to use some short song clips in this video interview with Prithvi Kumar, the composer of the three songs in the soundtrack of the movie May. Hi, this is Melanie of Pardesi Reviews, and I'm here with a special interview with Prithvi Kumar, who is joining me from New York, and he is the music director of the upcoming medical thriller May, which is a Tamil film uh, coming out uh, shortly. And the music launch is happening today in India. And I'm just so thrilled to be able to talk to you about this amazing soundtrack. There's three songs on the soundtrack. And my favorite song is Malaye. Malaye. I really adore this music. It is, I mean, I, I watch a lot of Indian films and a lot of them, you know, all of them have music and a lot of them is just not memorable. <laughs> I'll just put it to you that way. <laughs> so, so some soundtracks really strike a chord with you and some they're just in the moment and they're forgettable. And at least that first track on the that I listened to on the jukebox is just one of those songs that stay with you. So um, it just really resonated with me, even if I didn't understand all the words yet, I, because I don't have rigs, um, subtitles to go along with it. Just the music alone uh, in your voice is just so awesome. But anyway. Well, well firstly, <laughs> thank you so much for that. And I'm so happy to be here as part of your show. I've seen... Um, a lot of your reviews, and I really enjoy your videos. So, well, I'm I, very yeah. happy to be here. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> so, this is your first film being a music director, and and I know you work in New York, not in the music industry right now. So, um, but you were a part of a fusion band called Oxygen that started in Chennai. Yeah. Are you? And so, was it right that you started in that band when you were like a teenager, very young? Yes, that's that's correct. So my sort of foray into music um, at a fundamental level was about when I was about four or five. Um, you know, in a typical South Indian family, um, and my family is very musical and. They're either musicians or dancers, classical dancers. Wow. So, um, so my mother put me into classical music uh, vocals when I was about four or five, and I learned that for about 10 years. And then when I was sort of entering my uh, teenage years, I became a quote-unquote rebel, and I started listening to metal music and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you know, went through that uh, typical teenage phase, I guess. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, my parents were not happy. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, I sort of, uh, you know, mellowed out pretty earlier than I, you know, most people do, and... Uh, you know, just given my classical upbringing, um, when I was about 12 or 13, uh, we have these high school uh, competitions, you know, okay. every, all the local city high school, they compete in, you know, music contests, uh, art contests, uh, speech contests, things like that. So one of the contests was a music contest. And so that's where I met my bandmates from Oxygen. Uh, I was about, I think about 13 at the time. Wow. And um, yeah, so we all won the best instrumentalist in our respective categories and so we're like okay hey it looks like we're decent enough so let's uh let's uh let's start a band together let's just jam and see what happens um, wow so and, that and it story, was drum it was drums or percussion right. that was what you correct correct i learned indian classical vocal and indian classical percussion actually so um you know drumming when i started drumming when i was about 10 years old i think it's i had to you know, fundamental rhythm patterns already sort of mapped out in my head. So it wasn't, it wasn't that hard. Um, right. But yeah, you know, started at 13, put out, you know, a couple of albums, you know, along the way, had the opportunity to work with a lot of eminent, you know, Indian musicians. Um, 
and yeah, you know, after that, uh, I wanted to get into the business side of music. You know, I have uh, you know, two sides that I'm very interested. One is on the performance side and the business side. And that's what uh, brought me to New York. Um, so was that NYU, is that correct? That you got right, yeah. uh, master's in music right. business side, which was yeah. fascinating to me because yeah. I just assumed, oh, you went there for a, <laughs> a music, just a straight music degree, but no, that no, wasn't what... Yeah, so it was basically a hybrid program between Steinard, which is the um, music management slash audio engineering program, and Stern, which uh, so there was like a core business aspect to it, and a, you know audio engineering slash music management aspect. Wow. So it was a it was a good uh, crossover, um, but yeah, no, I think uh, you know that opened up you know my perspective on a global level, um, which uh, you know was very helpful. And so then you, I saw that you had worked for a time at Sony Music in New York yeah. as well. So um, that must have been fascinating because it must have just been all different kinds of music. I mean, I know Sony has some division that does work in with Indian films, but yeah, yeah. So this, I was working on more on the business side of uh, you know working on. Um, you know, streaming contracts, you know, this was back in 2013 when, yeah. you know, players like Spotify and Deezer were still, you know, sort of, you know, early entrants in the U.S. market. They didn't have as much presence as they do today. Right. Um, but it sort of gave me, you know, the outlook on, okay, music streaming is the way things are moving um, and how labels are handling that. Um, and interestingly, equity crowdfunding is something that sort of came into that mix. And that's how la I landed my current job today. So, uh, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I followed this uh, very weird pattern. Um, I never intended on, you know, intentionally intended on being, a, you know, fintech guy, a startup guy or an investment banking uh, you know, background, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know, because I was just looking at your whole background and I'm like, how did you get from A to B? Like, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it's, fantastic. it's fascinating, but you must have loved uh, being in New York and wanted to stay there. Yeah. So then how did it come about that you uh, became attached with this film? And because um, I know there's a lot of it's a debut director, it's a new woman editor. There's a whole a lot of people involved with this film who are new to the industry. It's their debut. Yeah. So about two summers ago, I think summer of 2017, I was, um, you know, I mean, I've known the producers for a while. Um, and, uh, you know, we were just having an informal chat about, um, you know, some, some stuff that we could be working on. And that's when the idea for a sort of a, you know, a, a social message driven, you know, independent film, um, came about and I was like oh yeah that sounds like a good idea and you know we sort of you know went back and forth on that for a while and then you know a couple of months later things started to gain traction and then in one of the subsequent meetings and I was just there you know just giving my input because I've known them and close to them but they you know kind of looked at me and like hey we want you to do the music and I'm like <laughs> sure <laughs> I, I'm on board so um, I love you know I love the script I love the you know, I, I, you know, encouraging, you know, newer artists and, uh, you know, working with established artists as well, you know, so um, actors, actresses, um, and the director has, you know, worked with some of the biggest names in the Tamil uh, film industry. So, so I think, you know, there was a good support, supporting cast and crew, um, right. in addition to a good script. So I think it had all the uh, essential ingredients um, that made me excited to jump on board. So I've always been curious and maybe this film is different than some others, but so you obviously you knew the script ahead of time, but did they ask you, we need a song that's going to be like this, or that's going to have this mood, or how did the back and forth go for you to, to write the, write the music? So yeah, there's... That's, yeah, that's a good question. So just given that, um, you know, up until, you know, recently, uh, you know, Bollywood slash Hollywood or Indian cinema, you know, it's, you know, there are a lot of, they're essentially constructed like a musical, right? Yes, exactly. And, uh, there's a lot Which of Which is why that I love them. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a song and dance. Um, yeah. And, you know, obviously that's uh, one of the USPs of the Indian film industry, you could say. Um, but uh, a lot of films these days, you know, they're, they're branching off into more of a, you know, very, you know, adhering strictly to the script and the storyline, not sort of, uh, making it too flashy um, yeah. and keeping it, you know, true to the true to the story. Right. And you know, the challenge was okay. Um, 
the director had a clear vision about okay, this is a very story driven film. Um, let's whatever we do, it has to be supporting of the storyline and the characters, um, which is why we took you know an experimental yet uh, say conservative approach when it came to constructing the songs of the film. So there are three songs in the album, but uh, only two appear in the film. But even okay. those two appear as montages. Right. Um, okay. So it, 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 the the film doesn't stop. You know, go off into a sidetrack, into a dance, and then sort of come back. But it sort of goes with the flow, and it builds on the story and the characters. So, yeah, it's a, it was a, like I said, you know, it was challenging, but it was you know very very enjoyable to work on. So you had so you had an idea from the director. I want to have a song at this because you had already seen the script. I want a song sort of yeah. at this point, um, and then did he tell you I? Or were you given more freedom of uh, just being able to do almost anything you wanted? Or did he really direct you as to, I need a sad song or I need an upbeat love song? Or, or how, how did that process kind of go? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, so the director has been you know, super supportive in allowing me to approach the music that I, in, the, in a way that I felt it had to be approached. So, you know, he's the captain of the ship. So he said, okay, you know, this is the sort of sentiment slash mood that the scenes are going to be having. Um, so use that as the theme and, you know, try to do your, you know, work your magic around that. So I think <laughs> I had, uh, I had, um, you know, I had, uh, I had the support of the director to, and the flexibility to sort of bring in sounds that I felt would be, you know, modern to yes. the summer audience um, and the Indian audience yet, familiar in a certain sense so right um so from uh from you know the instruments and the arrangements the way that they're done uh you know it's all three are you know on the melodious side of yes. music so there's no hard-hitting numbers on you know this, right. this soundtrack so no no heavy metal <laughs> no heavy metal yeah I know. So, al al although i did briefly think you know metallica kind of like came somewhere down but i'm like no I, I don't think I'd be alive if I went and put it. Actually, <laughs> actually, if you had done, I mean, seeing the trailer and how intense this thriller is going to be, it might not have been out of place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and, and actually, the uh, you know the third song is um, in my mind uh, fairly heavy, or of the three, uh, you know, relatively you know the heaviest song called Maya Yeah. Valley. yeah. Um, and you know there is it's a sad song and uh you know i think it's more on the heavier side but you know we don't i don't want to push my luck <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah what you're talking about with the instruments i definitely felt like um the modern feel but yeah and i don't know what the indian instruments called but mm -hmm. in the the beginning of the malia song there's sort of a zither It's like a, I don't know what it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's the, the English, the American uh, instrument that I would think of something where you, you're using little hammers on a stringed instrument. Yep. And so while it sounds modern, I know that's, that's a, like an older, probably in, Indian instrument. So I really like that juxtaposition of those things together. Like it's modern, but it still has some of those elements in it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, that's really the idea of, like I said, you know, mixing familiarity with um, newer sounds. So, um, and you know, the you know the audience are much more receptive these days. Um, you know, with the you know arrival of you know streaming, you know, they have so much exposure to so many different kinds of music, right? And and you know, their their choices are endless. And you know, when right. they do something like this and when you have their attention for those few minutes you want to give them something that's easy to recall easy to remember easy to relate to so that's really the idea here. so hopefully so, hopefully that worked out so did so you had a separate lyricist that you were working with right so which which came first the music or the the lyrics yeah so um in my sort of process driven world my you know um the music usually comes first Okay. And, uh, you know, I had laid down the you know base basic tracks and the basic tunes, and I had met the lyricist Christopher, who's done an amazing job. You know, he's really given life to the songs. You know, I might have given the tune, but he's actually given life to the songs. And um, I sort of played the tracks to them, uh, or to him. I'm sorry. And um, you know, it was a very you know, easy collaborative process. And uh, you know, we spent some time going over you know with the director on okay. 
what should be the mood, you know, what is the scene, how is the character sort of evolving, and how can this all sort of tie together. So, yeah. Yeah, so this, it's this amazing about, modern world, right? Because I'm sure you probably had conversations just like this, sort of Skype people all around the world and being able to collaborate on Skype and hear the hear the music and, you know, it's just amazing how people can collaborate from all different cities together on on music and and the creative process it really is and you know the recording for this film because i have the you know good fortune of being able to visit my hometown you know two three times a year um i you know this the soundtrack was recorded you know half in chennai and half in new york so wow <laughs> yeah so whenever i was in uh, chennai you know i would you know, take advantage of the face-to-face -face ses uh, sessions with, you know, the lyricist. And yeah, you know, always, you know, like you're saying, you know, I would just give him a call on Skype and I'm like, hey, what does this word mean? We need to change something here. And uh, yeah, it's very seamless. And yeah, technology is, you know, is a boon, I have to say. So. Well, and then when it came to the point of subtitling the film, uh, Rakes, then I know she worked closely with you because yeah. her signature in doing subtitles of films is... To me, she's the gold standard because she has such a good command of English and I'm never taken out of the film. But her signature, besides yellow subtitles, is the rhyming in English of all the lyrics to the songs. And she takes special care with all of that. And so she wants it to rhyme in English, but did she have a lot of back and forth with you in making sure that the meaning was still conveyed um, when in her subtitles as what you were in intending? Yeah, like you're saying, you know, she is the gold standard and, you know, her subtitles are incredible. And, um, you know, just given for how many years she's been doing this, you know, she really didn't need a lot of back and forth. She sort of nailed it, you know, very early on. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just a few clarifications here and there, you know, she was in touch with the lyricist and, uh, and yeah, between them, they figured it out. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm just excited to, you know, be working with her and, you know, someone as senior yeah. as her and respected as her. Uh, we're very grateful you know, to have it. I mean, it means a lot to someone like me because the songs are so integral important, and important to Indian film. And I've watched many films where we'll get to the point of the song and they don't bother to subtitle at all. And yes. and sometimes that, that song may be moving the plot forward or uh, telling you the inner thoughts of one of the characters or whatever it is. And mm -hmm. then I'm just... I mean, I can still enjoy the music for what it is, but... Um, you know, I'm just kind of left out. And, and so to me, it's so great that she makes a point of any film that she's a part of. Yep. Every song is subtitled and she puts in that after extra effort. So, you know, you, you hear the poetry of it in, yep. in English as well. Yeah, so. absolutely. And I actually think, you know, given that, you know, the world is, you know, a movie's playing field these days, right? It's no more a movie just gets released locally and it's just for the right. local audience, right? There's just so many mediums that people get to watch. And uh, for those who don't understand the language, subtitles are, I would say, the most important, even more important than the dialogue themselves. And yeah. uh, she's also able to sort of translate the cultural component. Yes. In, you know, there's a... You know, there's a verbal component and then there's a cult cultural component. And it's, you know, important to connect the two. And, you know, she's really the best in, you know, making right. sure that connection is made. And, you know, for an international audience, you know, anyone outside. And I would even say, you know, people within Tamil Nadu, um, you know, not all of us really understand all the you know nuances of the Tamil language, including myself. Wow. I've been to many Tamil films and, you know, there are certain lines and dialogues that I don't understand. And I'm born and brought up there. Um, wow. And, uh, yeah, so... I, is I, it I, not just slang or something or or just so the, so the you know movies these days you know are much more easier to understand generally you know if you know tamar but even within that context uh, there are certain words you know if you use the traditionally you know or orthodox tamar there are certain words ah, that you okay. use, um in context of a conversation um that you know people like me who've been born and brought up they don't you know understand but you know we understand the you know what they're trying to say uh, but, you know, the nuances, I think, are important, which is where subtitling, even for the local audience these days, is you know, very important. Yeah, to me, it was so surprising how sometimes people can't watch from another region because they don't have subtitles. Yeah. You may have to wait for a dub version to come out mm -hmm. or they remake it with whichever regional star it is. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I'm able to watch all the different languages here in the U.S. Almost every Indian movie is shown with English subtitles. And as you pointed out, 
um, it's only to my benefit that Netflix and Amazon Prime are in sort of a, a arms race with each other and more and more Indian content is coming out and exciting original content like Sacred Games, for instance. Right. Um, and it's reaching, as you said, the reach is, is not, it's, um, it's not just local, it's reaching an international audience and, uh, you know, and it's very important for things like film festivals as well. You have to have English side subtitles um, to reach that kind of audience as well. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. So, uh, Rake said that you would uh, sing a few lines. Will you sing my favorite song? <laughs> sure. Why not? Um, all right. Let's go. Let me use sing the chorus for you. Okay. Male, un male. Sale oram penpu sarale. Ase, yen ase. Denam dorum ni pudu ase. <laughs> and I love your voice too. Oh, so you. I'm so thank glad. You. I mean, was from the beginning, were you going to be able to sing for the songs or did that just kind of happen organically or? Yeah, so you know what? It might be surprising, but I never identified myself as a singer. I was uh, very happy being behind the scenes on the drums or, you know, producing. And I initially sang these songs as, you know, rough tracks. And I'm like, okay, let me see which singer I can actually, you know, in Tamil music and Indian music broadly, the composers, you know, don't usually sing all the songs. And well, A.R. Like, Raman sometimes does. Sometimes Raman, yeah, does actually, yeah. Actually, yeah, a lot of composers these days are getting into singing, which I think is fantastic. And, you know, A.R. Raman set the trend, right? He is the trendsetter for, you know, Indian films worldwide, I would say. Right, yes. Um, and when I played the songs to the uh, producers and the director, they okay, hey, this is the tune. And I was sort of focusing on, okay, the construction and the tune and all of that. They didn't focus on any of that. They were like listening to the voice and they're like, okay, so who's the singer? And let's first lock him in and then we'll <laughs> worry about it. Like, like, okay, this did not go in the direction that I wanted it to go. Uh, but That's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, so here I am three songs later. Yes, so <laughs> unintentionally, so but... So you get, were you aiming to try to do film music because it just seems very different from what you had done before or it just, it just seemed, is that something that you want to do going forward? Um, yeah, that's a good question. You know, I, it was not, uh, you know, I didn't get into music, uh, you know, thinking I had a plan. I got into music because I just like playing music and I was very happy, you know, doing live shows with my band, you yeah. know, putting out records, playing with different musicians, building my sort of musical sensibilities by collaborating with different artists. Um, and, you know, after I moved to New York, I sort of went into a little bit of a hibernation You know, I got busy with uh, work and I, you know, I really enjoy where I work. And I have to say, you know, my colleagues and, you know, the management of my firm are super supportive of what I do. And, um, you know, I have the space now to, you know, work on music more and more. And this was more of a, you know, I wanted to keep in touch with music. You know, I didn't want to, you know, really lose that connection with India, with, you know, where I'm from. And uh, this seemed like the perfect opportunity for me to do that. Um, and so, yeah, no, I think going forward, I'm, you know, very open on, you know, looking at other projects um, that are in the pipeline and, uh, yeah, working with some, you know, great directors, you know, script dependent you know i think the script is everything and um yeah really looking to sort of grow my footprint back in my hometown so. i think yeah i mean i hope this is the start of some of a beautiful uh career continue and the the advantage for you is with the time difference to mm -hmm. india you can kind of collaborate and work on your non new york work hours and be yes. able to yeah. <laughs> it kind yes. of works out well that way Yes. Yeah. No. And, and, you know, like I said, you know, I have the good fortune of being able to go back fairly often. Um, so yeah. I try to make the most of my time, you know, I go into the studio, my, one of my bandmates has a studio. So I, you know, go there hang out with them, you know, and, uh, you know, work on music, but, uh, you know, like you're saying, you know, I'm really looking forward to, you know, spending more time there. So were some of your, um, fellow musicians from oxygen, were they part of recording, recording these songs or did yeah, you so do so? Two of them, one of them who owns the studio, which this was recorded at. So he was sort of indirectly, you know, helping out, you know, by being gracious and letting me use the studio. Uh, it's called Aura in Chennai. And then another 
a bandmate who sung the backing vocals on the second track called Katre Selamore. Um, he was actually in New York and I was recording that song and, you know, he, we were just catching up in the studio and he was like listening to the song. His name is Harish. And um, he, he really liked it. And uh, he, and I'm like, okay, if you want to, you know, get in there and belt out a few things. And before I even finished the sentence, he was in the booth. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, you know, we were like, uh, you know, just back, back to the band days. So he was, you know, helping out with the background vocals and it's come out really well. And I, I should actually thank him for, for doing that. You know, it's, he's added a you know, good level of um, depth to the song. It's vocal. So, yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of them from my band, you know, they're very successful in their own right these days. You know, each of them have their, you know, individual careers, you know, on the music side. I'm um, probably the only one who went astray. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, no, you know, they're, they're fantastic. And, you know, I've... You know, had uh, I all I've most of what I've learned, you know, is playing with them. You know, we've sort of grown together, and you know, right. I mean, from such together. a young age, from high school. Wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, could you have ever dreamed at that moment that you would? Because I know film music is just such an integral part of the music scene in India. Mm -hmm. Could you have ever dreamed? Were, was that ever in your, you know, goals or then or just no? <laughs> no, no, not at all. Not at all. Um, you know, I was I identified more, myself more on the independent music side. Um, yeah. Because, you know, working with musicians, albums, live shows. Um, I was, you know, certainly exposed to a lot of film music. You know, being there, you can't not. Right. Be, you know, exposed right. To, yeah. Um, and you know, artists like A.R. Rahman and yeah, you know, so many great artists coming out of there. So, um, but yeah, you know, like I said, this was for me. It was more of a personal way to keep in touch with, um, you know, what I was you know, what I'd grown up with and uh, more importantly, keeping in touch with music, you know, on a fundamental level. So, right. yeah, right. You know, I, have, I really have to thank, uh, you know, the producers, you know, Sundram Productions and, uh, you know, the director, the cast and the crew um, for really putting this together. And uh, yeah, I wish them, you know, I wish the movie all the very best. I can't wait to uh, see the, f I mean, I've heard the music, but it's so integral in Indian film music. It's not like a Hollywood soundtrack. Essentially, you could have Beyonce or something do a song and it's just over the end credits, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> it's not <laughs> integral to the film. And so yes. I, yes. I can't wait to see these songs in their place in the film and see, you know, what the emotional moment is for those songs, because then I know when I'm listening to it again, that's the way these the film music is. It it you know, you have it in your mind the the film rolling and, and remembering those scenes. So yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank uh, you so much for spending time with me and having this interview. It was fascinating because I've always wanted to talk to somebody about how this process goes. Well, definitely probably some movies you can tell, okay, they wrote this song after and they just <laughs> wanted to have the hit number and they just stuck <laughs> it in somewhere or they stuck it in over the end credits. But I could just tell listening to these songs, they're going to be integral to the plot in some way um, about the main character. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing how they fit into the film. Well, thank you so much. You know, I'm so happy to, you know, have done this with you and, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing more of your reviews. You know, every time the new summer movie comes out and uh, I do a YouTube and like review and I'm like, all right, I got to see Melody's reviews. So, you know. Are you able to see a lot of Tamil films in New York? Uh, yeah, or... I mean, on, unfortunately, when in Manhattan, there aren't uh, yeah. any theaters that play, but, and, you know, New Jersey, there are a few, but uh, I catch it through some of the streaming services, you know, apps that are on Apple TV. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I do, you know, every now and then. I know. I'm, I'm lucky where I am in Chicago and that uh, they play, we have enough population, Indian population in my suburb yeah. that I can watch new release Tamil and Telugu films very close awesome. to me. Awesome. Um, but yeah, but even if I miss something, you're right. Almost everything now comes on streaming and you, exactly. and it's not that long to wait either until you can, you yep. can see it. So, yep. which yep. is fantastic. Yeah. So this is releasing on the 23rd and I would assume, you know, you'll be able to view it on one of the streaming sites, you know, not too. In the Probably distance. in a month or so. right? <laughs> yes. I would also. Because yeah. I'm, I have to see it myself. <laughs> oh. so, You're not going back for any of the premieres or anything? I unfortunately can't. I have uh, a lot going on here on the, you know, on the work front. So, you know, I had business development. So, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Like I said, I live dual lives and, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there in spirit, you know. Right. I, the music launch is happening actually as we are speaking right now. So, um <laughs> I'm speaking there via video and I'm speaking to you here now. So I'm really. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah.
Um, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I really appreciate it. And I wish you the best of luck in just hearing this music. I hope there are many more films that your music will be a part of because um, I I just like this new modern sound that you're bringing to it. And I, I think it will really fit well. Like you're saying, Tunnel Film is, uh, the cinema is changing and there's more and more kind of um, realistic scripts and things. And I think this kind of music will fit in well with those kind of films. So, well, I'm sure you could do any kind of music that you wanted to, but especially one of the, from this sample, I could imagine it fitting in a lot of um, some of the new wave of uh, movies that are coming out. So I hope other uh, producers or whatever, please listen to this music. And I hope it, it leads to more and more projects for you. Thank you so much. Matt. So where can uh, people find you online if they're looking uh, looking for more of your music? Yeah, so um, on Spotify, Apple Music, just search for Prithvi Kumar on YouTube, same thing. Um, you know, this, it's a, uh, you know, at this point, you know, I'm usually very guarded about my music, so there's not a lot out there, but uh, I plan to sort of increase the playlist. Awesome. Uh, you know, in the coming months, so yeah. So are you a part of Savin or anything of any of the Kumar? Yeah, so, so, the, so the soundtrack is available on um, Savin, Ghana, Spotify, Apple Music, um, Wink, which is an Indian app for music. Okay. So, um, yeah, all of the major streaming platforms. Um, awesome. Yeah. Okay, great. Because I, like, I, I uh, subscribe to Savin myself and mm -hmm. torture my family by listening to the music <laughs> in the car. <laughs> Hopefully they're not tortured by this. No, they wouldn't be, but they're just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right so great and um you can find me online at pradesi yt and please do subscribe here for more interviews film reviews and trailer reactions <laughs>